So you're sick of your camp sticking out like a sore thumb, and you want to build one that looks like it belongs in the wonderfully annihilated world of Fallout? Well, strap in, because I've got an 11-step guide to help you build your perfect, natural-looking camp in Fallout 76. Alright, so the most important step of the entire guide is picking the theme you want to go with. Are you thinking more of a militaristic Brotherhood of Steel build, a kind of run-of-the-mill trader post that you would kind of stumble across while walking through the wastes, or a rugged raider build? The Once you have the theme, it's all streamlined from there because you just follow along with that for the rest of the build, and it makes everything a lot easier once you have one. Now that you have your theme established, you can start searching for a location to actually build your camp in. And this is one of the more fun parts of the entire process because Bethesda filled Appalachia with so many just absolutely amazing locations. From the Cranberry Bog down in the southeast all the way up to the Toxic Valley in the north, there's just a wide range of different uh, environments to build in. Like the mire has the crazy overgrowth to it, the... The uh, Savage Divide has the mountainous wooded areas, even down to the ash heap in the southwest with the, just the barren wasteland of dead trees and gray. Just, I highly recommend wandering around for a while before you build your camp and just you'll be surprised some of the spots you'll stumble across. And those are the ones that, while they might be more challenging to build in, are the most rewarding once you have your camp done. Now that you've picked your location, it's time to actually place your camp module. And this is where you can kind of get creative with it because depending on where you place your camp module, you might be able to do more with your build than you originally expected. For example, if you were to climb up into a tree and place your camp up there, something not a lot of people are aware of is your camp has a set height, but it also has a set depth. And if you place your camp up in a tree, you'll get the original height up from the camp module, but you also get a set depth down to the ground, which is how I'm able to build my watchtower builds. Because once I place the camp up in the tree, I have everything up from there and then everything down to it, so I get a much higher range to build in. Now that you have your camp module placed, it's time to start laying the actual groundwork for your camp build. Now this part is actually very important because depending on how you place your foundations, it could make or break how realistic or natural looking your camp actually looks within the world. Now, when I build, I try and place my foundations as low to the ground and flush with the ground as I possibly can because a cube being placed in the ground is generally not gonna look that natural on its own. So the lower you can get it, the flusher with the ground you can get it, the more or I guess less out of place it'll look when someone shows up and sees it for the first time. Now that you've got your foundations in place, it's time to start actually putting down the framework for your camp. Now this is very important because this is basically the camp. You are gonna be placing your walls, your staircases, your roofs, everything that is a base structure will get placed in this step. No details, just a sketchbook outline of how your camp is going to go. And once you have that, then the fun can start. Now my biggest nitpick when it comes to building a natural looking camp in Fallout 76 is so many times I'll see a camp that's up in the air being supported by just a single staircase. Now I know that physics don't really matter in this game they just you can build a 20 ton structure on a single metal or wooden staircase and it just works no pun intended but to make it look like it belongs within the world you have to start placing actual support structures and in the step section you have these metal beams that when placed correctly can just add that slight bit of realism and natural look to your camp and it goes such a long way in making your camp look like it was originally there when the game was made. Is, uh, 
Now that you have your structural supports in, it's time to start placing low-level details to your build. Now, I'm not talking like stash boxes or anything like that. I'm talking like small things like guardrails or balconies and stuff like that that they aren't necessary parts of the build but they help kind of maintain that level of realism where if I'm climbing a six-story tower I want to know that there's something keeping me from falling to my death and a simple wooden barricade on a uh, level up there is goes a long way to making it feel like again it belongs in this world With your camp's basic structure completed, it's time to move on to where you're going to place your utilities. Now I'm talking your vending machines, your resource nodes, generators, water purifiers, stuff like that. And my personal preference when it comes to this apocalyptic world is clutter is a scavenger's dream. You want to have everything close by so you can keep an eye on it. It's never that far away. So what I'll generally do is I'll place a 4x4 grid of foundations or just a small area and I will try and cram everything I possibly can into that small area. Because with everything crammed together, it again, it looks natural. It looks like you don't want your stuff spread out that far. You can keep everything within this close distance and never have to worry if, oh, did that generator get destroyed over there did that water purifier get blown up by some super moons everything is within eyesight and ear sight and not to mention it makes wiring everything up a lot easier when it's just a few feet away now another important part to placing your utilities is your power conduits and this can actually go a long way to making your camp look natural. If you're placing your power conduits in a way that has your wires draped across walkways so that you would be hitting your face on a live wire, it's not going to feel like it belongs. Because who in the real world would do that? So generally what I try to do is when I'm placing power conduits, I'll try to keep them out of sight and out of mind so that yeah, those lights over there are on. You may never see the wires that are keeping them on, but you know they're there somewhere. Now the next step in the process is placing your lighting. And this, again, can go a long way towards making your camp feel like a natural location in Appalachia. When I'm placing my lights, I generally tend to try and find places where lights would actually be hanging from. I'm not going to have a ceiling fan light jammed in a corner where it's knocking against a wall every three seconds. And I'm not going to have uh, a ceiling light hanging down in a stairway where you would be banging your face off of it every time you climbed it. I try and keep them up in the corners of rooms where... They're giving off enough light to light a room, but they're not interfering with anything. And while we're on the topic of lighting, I want to throw in the importance of natural fire lit light sources, like the oil lamp posts or the oil lanterns. These slightly flickering and orange hues do so much for the natural look of a camp. And a few cleverly placed candles or, again, oil lamps can do so much for setting the atmosphere for your camp. And I highly recommend going and picking up the plan for these because they are a very, very essential part of any kind of more darker themed camps. Now another technique I recommend trying is placing low level lighting. It goes a long way and it's a different look you're not really used to seeing out there most camps you go to they just have a few string lights hanging from the ceiling and that's basically it you throw a few lights low on the wall and it's a different look it gives off a new perspective of light coming up instead of coming down and it generally just 
looks like it belongs a lot of the time. Once you have all that place, it's time to start setting up your defenses. And I'd like to preface this part of the guide by saying, yes, I'm aware that there's massive flying mutated bats in this world. I know that there's mega sloths and super mutants, but if you were to stumble across a random person's camp in this world, your average person isn't going to have 37 missile turrets to protect their water pump and porta potty. It's just not how it works. So, if you're going for more of a natural look, place a few cement tires or some concrete barriers. Stack up some crates and put a turret on top of that. You don't need all those turrets. Think of it like this. You're going to want to protect the things that are the most important to you. Like your generators, your resource nodes, your water purifiers. So, go place a turret with your generator. Jump up on top of your resource node, drop a turret there. Place concrete barriers in front of these things so that it's tougher for the enemies to make shots on them. Think rationally what would make it tougher for you if you were going to try and attack and no, the answer isn't 37 missile turrets. With all those other steps completed, this is where you truly separate your camp from every other camp on the server. The detail portion of the guide is where you truly make the camp your own. You go in and this is where you add personal effects. Stuffed animals on top of beds, a radio next to a couch, maybe a, a sitting area in one of your rooms. This is where the story comes out in your camp and you place a few chairs a certain way maybe a box between them and you can actually make a story that people when they enter your camp they'll be like oh i wonder what the reason behind that is or oh this person has a ton of crates in the corner they might be a caravanner or oh there's a ton of toolboxes over there around all these workbenches this might be a mechanic that's working on some power armor for the locals stuff like that like this is where your camp gets its feeling of being more than a camp and more of a like a living space or a home or a store or somewhere that again naturally exists within this world Before I go here, I just wanted to thank every single one of you who has been commenting on my videos and liking and sharing them. It means the world to me that you guys like my dumb little builds I throw together every week, and uh, it, it gives me a reason to kind of keep my creative juices flowing and come up with something new week to week, and I really like doing it. I hope you guys stick around. Um, if you have any suggestions going forward, I'd love to hear them in the comments. And, uh, as always, thanks for watching, happy building, and good luck out there.